today's presentation, Market Analyzer 7. We'll look at some of the advanced scanning functionality within Market Analyzer 7. My name is Jeff Cartridge. I'll be running today's presentation. And we'll start out with a sort of 20 minute or so run through some of the tools that you can use when you're using the program to, to make the scans and some of the sort of more advanced tricks that we can use with the scanning functionality. The other thing we'll do after that sort of 20 minutes or so where we'll focus on that topic is we'll have an open session for questions on any part of the program or anything that you've been, um, any part of it that you've been using and anything that you've got questions on you're welcome to ask at that stage. In order to communicate you can type in a question on the platform that you have there, the GoToMeet webinar and what will happen is it will pop up in front of me. So when you type in a question, I'll see it and I'll attempt to answer the questions as we go through the presentation. Initially we will focus on the scanning side of things, but then it will be more open in the second part of the presentation. Today's presentation will also be recorded and will be placed up on the Trader Dealer blog. So you can go onto the Trader Dealer blog, click on Market Analyzer 7, and there's a range of webinars up there that you can access as well. So there is a copy if you want to refer back to it in the future also. So we'll have a look at the functionality that we've got within the Market Analyzer 7 program and the scanning capability that is included. This is fairly familiar for most people because it's very similar to what you had in the previous version of Market Analyzer. The DTMX trading tools, the analyzer, is basically brought straight from the previous platform. But there is a few differences and I'll explain what they are and how we can take advantage of those. The key difference with the new analyzer in here is that we can actually scan on the current data. So if I run a scan now on a MACD crossover, MACD is the one that we've got in here, and click Calculate, it will bring me up a list of shares that meet the criteria that I've set. And there's that list for today. Now that list is live as of now. And if I was to run the same scan in an hour's time, the list may or may not be different. Previously, it was always run on the clock. Yesterday's closing price data, whereas today it's run on the actual current price at the time that I run it. So if I click it, calculate now, it could be different literally five minutes later than when I previously pushed the button, depending on what's happened in the market. So the information is actually live and or updated. The scan is run live in effect. Now it creates um, a few challenges for those that are not wanting to run a scan live on today but wanting to run on yesterday's data or a previous day. And we'll look at how you can overcome that one today because there are some tricks that you can use to get around that. The other thing just from once you from last presentation showed a couple of ways of analyzing the data. You can click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the last and that highlights the entire list. Control C copies the list and then if I go over to the watch lists, I can clear the current watch list and I can import it which then pastes it into there. I can then scan through those shares just by scanning through that watch list. I just need to save it, so save it as uh, scan one, tell it OK. And then I can choose the watch list, scan one from in here. And I can then scroll through using the blue buttons here, I can scroll through that watch list. Now that's one way to go about it. And that way I've got the watch list for future records. The other thing that I can do is using these black buttons here, I can simply scroll through the analyzer results. So if I push the black button, I'll move through the analyzer results. And if we look up the analyzer again, bring that back to the front. So 
just over here, so I can scroll through that list of results just using the black buttons in here, which scrolls through the watch list. So there's two ways to do it. One is I can save the watch list for future reference, which I showed in the previous presentation on watch lists, or I can just simply just pop backwards and forwards through the watch list using the black buttons on the chart through here, which will pick up the analyzer results. A um, couple of other changes you may have noticed since you last used the platform. The FX intraday charts, so anyone that was looking at currency intraday charts would have noticed they weren't updating correctly. That has been fixed in the latest release that was rolled out yesterday. So your chart problem should have been fixed now. If you're still having problems with your FX charts, then please give the help desk a call on the 1300 number. And the other one that's in testing right at the moment is a portfolio facility, which we're currently working on as well. Support are available Tuesday and Wednesday evenings, so tonight and tomorrow night till 9 p.m. So that's 9 p.m. Melbourne time and or Australian Eastern Standard Time. So they're there late in the evening if you want to give them a call on 1300 363 766. Good opportunity to get some help if you're finding it difficult to find your way around the new system. But what we're going to look at today is the more advanced ideas in using the analyzer. And most of this is not going to be using the analyzer itself. The tricks I'm going to show you are actually in the trading system. Now remembering with the analyzer, we can run a scan on the current price. And we can choose any of the parameters that we want for that any of these ones in here, and simply calculate a scan on that. The retracement didn't trigger anything today. Price change above or below a dollar. So CSL has increased a dollar today. So that will bring up the list of shares that meet that criteria. We can combine those using the Analyzer Wizard. And again, this was what we covered last presentation. The Analyzer Wizard allows us to put together two criteria together to create a scan that looks at more than one criteria. Remembering to take a look at those look back periods, because the look back is the days it is valid for. But one of the questions we often get um, is can we look back on more information? So there are other scans that we can do. Um, question from Jason, I scan with simple moving average 5 crossover, exponential moving average 300 days, look back 5, just comes with the code with A. Um, we'll just try that one, I'll just try that Jason, let's see what's happening there. So we'll create a new scan. Looking at um, this, okay. So simple moving average crossover. You just scroll down. Uh, new indicator title. Give it a name, Jason. So moving average, um, Jason, just clarify, you're using just a single crossover? You can clarify that. We'll use a single crossover, a three-day simple moving average, by using two moving average crossovers, okay. My two crossover, add that in. So using in here a five day simple moving average crossover over a 300 
day exponential fast crossing above slow and a look back of five okay so that's the periods is that just an, Jason if you can confirm that's the setup that you're looking for Okay, spot on. Okay, so we'll save that. Tell it OK. And we go into the analyzer. And we'll choose the top 20. Calculate that. And we come up with the answer just like that. Um, so if you're getting an error there, Jason, I suggest you give the, the help desk a call on that one and they can just check out what's going on. It certainly seems to be working fine here. They've come up with results, no problem at all. Um, Wayne, question from Wayne, can we... Um, question from Wayne there, can you analyze the international markets watch list? Not at this stage, you can't run scans on the international markets. You can run it um, only on the on the Australian market at this stage. So Jason, need to did not change to my formulas. Hang on, we'll go back. Jason. Just to clarify, five for fast, slow for 300, fast cross above slow. Um, Jason, just, I've got as far as I, can you clarify what it is I haven't changed? We've got the five period here above the 300, fast cross above slow, and a five day look back. Is there something that should be different? Now it's right, okay, so save that, okay, and going back to the analyzer, which we already have up, the analyzer, select JSON, calculate, And it's thinking. It take a little bit longer on a calculation like this because looking back 300 periods, it's got to bring in all the data for the stock for 300 periods ago. So it needs to pull back 300 periods of information. Um, it, it's completed 21 scan, no, none of them returned true. So none of them actually met the criteria today. But Essentially, it can be it can be struggling. The computer may be struggling a bit just with the amount of data that it's got to bring in. That could be a problem that you're having there. But it certainly seems to be working okay. And if you are having consistent problems with it, um, please give the help desk a call on that one. Okay. Yeah, the whole market, um, I, I won't run through the whole market now, Jason, just simply because of the time it will take, um, because it will take quite a while to pull in that much data when it has to pull in the 300. But essentially, it just may be that it's trying to pull too much data, which is causing some problems for your computer. That could be the issue that you're having. So just moving on into the actual how do we do scans when we wanted to look at say yesterday's information not today so we want to do a scan on yesterday's data um, I'll have a look at it after the presentation Jason so how do we do a scan on yesterday's data and the way we do this may not seem logical to start with but as I explain it it will become clearer so if we go into the trading system
And if you're getting this error message coming up, which I, I do when I move into the trading system, it's because the watch lists I've got haven't all have come across from the previous platform, but they're not linked to current ones. So some of the scans that I've already saved that have been pulled across are linked to watch lists that now don't no longer exist. And so when I run these new scans in here, if I update the watch list, then they'll all work okay. But what we're going to have a look at here is the money flow index. And if I'm wanting to run a scan on yesterday, I'm using the ASX20. And here, again, just keeping a short list for, for time-wise, so it doesn't take too long to run it. And all I've done on the exit is I've got a time stop in here. And if we have a look at the time stop, it exits after one day. Whether I made a profit or loss, it gets out after one day. Your exit's not essential, but that can give you can be useful for what we're trying to do. If you come in in the money flow, we're looking for a money flow 40, sorry, below the 50 line. That's all we're looking for. And we save that strategy, and then we can run it in the as a strategy. We're now ready to test it, and the logic here is we're running on yesterday's data. Now yesterday's data is history. We're effectively back testing. So even though we're running a scan to find out what happened yesterday, that really is a historical test because we're now looking at the current market and we're looking at current data when we run the analyzer. In order to look back, we're now looking at history. And all we do in here is set up the date 26th of the 3rd, well hang on, where are we? Yesterday's date, 16th of the 4th to 16th of the 4th. And we'll run the scan on that day. And we run the back test. So we're scanning for the same criteria that we'd be scanning in the analyzer, but we're scanning on today's or yesterday's data. Now you're not going to see much on this chart, because we haven't got any profit or loss. But if we go to the standard report list, there are all the shares that meet the criteria on that day, which was yesterday that we ran. So AMP, BHP, CBA, Macquarie, Newcrest, Suncorp, and Westpac all met that criteria. We could then copy that into a watch list as we did previously, control C, and go and create a new watch list import it, and we can analyze the shares through that. So instead of using the analyzer to run a scan on historical data, we instead use the back tester to do that. Now I'm running it on yesterday's closing prices, 16th to the 4th, but I could run it on any day that I chose. So I could go back to the 10th to the 4th and run exactly the same thing run the back test and find out what met the criteria on the 10th of the 4th or any day in history. 10th of the 4th through to today and I get a list of shares that met that criteria during the last week. And they're all dated in date order here. So there's the ones that were met on the 10th, on the 11th and 12th and so on. So I'm able to run historical scans using the back tester to do that. I can scan on historical data, and in the next presentation we'll take you further with the back tester, how you can actually test and build trading systems in here. But in this one, we're just showing you how you can use the scanning functionality. Things like the profit chart will show up or down, but it doesn't really mean too much, because all we're looking for are the shares that met the criteria that we were looking at. So that's how we run historical tests or historical back tests. One of the other questions we've had is the scanning functionality is based on daily information. So when you're using the D2MX trading tools, the analyzer, it looks at daily information. And when you use the analyzer wizard, the lookbacks are on daily information over five days or three days or whatever we see use in there. But what we're looking at with this one is we're actually 
so the question I often get is, well, can I look at weekly information? And yes, you can. You can run weekly scans. And again, it comes back into using the back processing system to do that. And here the weekly scans, I go in and Money Flow Index is set up. When I click on Edit, and here I've got the option for how do I determine what I'm looking for. The Money Flow above, below, 14 period, below 50, and the data interval here, I can set it daily, weekly, or monthly. So if I want weekly, the Money Flow, in this case, below 50 on a weekly basis, and remembering you may have to adjust the periods depending what you're trying to achieve. Let's say over the last, we use a five week scan. So it would be five weeks that we're looking at, not, not 14 days as we were before, and tell it OK. So now when we save that, what we've got is we've now got the ability to run a weekly scan. Go to run the strategy and we run the back test. And we'll get up the results from there. Now again the 16th can run the 16th to the 4th. So just get yesterday's information and run the back test. And there's the list of shares that meet that criteria on a weekly basis. So essentially a weekly scan. But being aware that the week here is a week from today backwards. So if I run this on the weekend, it will be a week as it normally would be. But if I were to run it on a Wednesday, it will be Wednesday back to the previous Wednesday. That's the week that it will be looking at, not the week that's just been. Now uh, you can play around and use this to set up the time period you're looking at. So again, we could go back to the weekend, run it on the 14th, which is the weekend, and then we'll be running a scan on a normal week. So that would be a normal week, and that's the results that we'll get if we were to do that. So with the scanning, we can take it that step further, and we can run end of day scans. So even though we've got live scans now included, we can still run the end of day that we're used to. It's just a little different than what you were used to doing. And we can also run weekly scans in here. Both of these require to use the back tester, the trading system as it's called, under the D2MX trade tools. So there's a couple of different ways of approaching those scans in the new Market Analyzer 7. Once you've got your list, hold down your shift key, click to highlight it, and control C and then we can import that list, click clear, import the list, and that list is now a watch list which we can analyze and monitor as we choose. So rather than with the new platform here, the MA7, we now have added functionality that we didn't have previously. The main advantage being we can scan on a daily basis to see that the actual, um, to see whether the criteria is true. And so if I want looking for a moving average crossover, that may not be true at 10.30 in the morning, but could be true at 3.30 in the afternoon. And I can run a scan which will tell me that. But I can also run the traditional end of day scan like I have been using the back tester, or I can run a weekly scan in the back tester as well by just changing the criteria for when I put that information in. So in here I have a list of all the shares of all the different um, strategies and I can add in any of the indicators, anything that I choose to use in the analyzer is included in the back tester. As well as anything I've created in the analyzer wizard any of these combination indicators, I can back test those as well in the back tester. Jason's idea, we can test that on a weekly basis if we chose to. Now pulling in 300 weeks of data is going to take a long time and may cause problems. But 
essentially any of these can be tested on a weekly basis. If I look up stochastic crossover and I could look at a weekly stochastic. I don't have to look at purely a daily. Tell it OK. Save that criteria. Tell it OK and then run the strategy. And I can set up the time frame that I want to look at. If I'm wanting to look at the latest date, which was the 16th of the 4th, the 4th, and I'll run that back test. And click on standard report list to get the shares that meet the criteria. In this case, nothing did. So are there any other questions around the, the platform? So we've had a look at taking the analyzer a step further. Are there any other questions around the analyzer, anything we've discussed today, or any other aspects of the platform that you've been got questions about? Um, one of the other ones that's coming, just on the on the analyzer side of things, is you will have the capability to scan the entire market. At the moment, you're limited to the ASX watch list uh, up to the ASX 300 or the All Ordinaries. One of the things that will be coming is this capability to scan the entire market and also to filter via price or via volume. So those functionalities are being worked on at the moment and you will be able to do that in the analyzer in the future. Um, not currently available, but we are working on it. The buy and sell function is the same as the previous version. Um, Dora, just to clarify, the buy and sell functions as in the trading platform or as in the, as in the trading system? Because your orders are up in here and you can trade through Trader Dealer just as you did before using your orders through there. But the buy and sell functionality in the trading system, you add your entry and you add your exits. Can you just clarify the question there? After both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the we will do a future presentation on linking into Trader Dealer and using the, the order. Um, currently I'm not not set up here to actually authorize to trade on this platform. They don't give me access out of a demo platform to place trades. But we will actually show in a future presentation exactly how to do that buy and sell in there. Um, and then within the trade tools trading system, we'll take a look at the trading system in the next presentation about setting up your entry and your exit criterias, when you get in, when you get out, and running tests on historical data to help work out your trading system. So we'll get cover those, Dora, in, in future presentations. Um, if you've got a specific question, I can answer it now, but otherwise it will be very similar to what you had before because the, the trading systems moved straight over from the, the Market Analyzer 7, uh, market, earlier versions of Market Analyzer 7, and the order system is still linked through to Trader Dealer, so very similar. Um, Jason, a question. Um, MA6 we're able to scan China stocks, will it come with MA7 as well? Currently we can't scan international data, we can only scan ASX data and that's just where things are at at the moment. Um, again, put that on the, let the help desk know about that one and it'll be added to the list of functionality that we can look for future releases. But at this stage it's just the ASX market that you can scan on. Um, Graham comment, when adding a, one more stock to a watch list, it comes at the top, not alphabetical. 
So if we if we've got a watch list here, and I type in another code, which is um, let's say htm, and that pops it in the top of the list. You can sort your watch list just by clicking on the on the heading. So clicking on security code, even though it does pop in at the top of the list, just click security code and that will then sort it back to alphabetic. And you can do the same with any of the other headings. So you could pick up the um, biggest move for the day just by clicking on percentage or the smallest move of the day. You can order by those as well as clicking on plus and minus, it will bring up the order through here. So clicking on any heading will sort the lot watch list any way that you choose. Um, thing from Wayne, you've noted the support is in the system watch lists are different to the watch list you can select in the analyzer. Um, let's have a look at that. DTMX Trade Tool is the analyzer. Different, so you've got your system watch lists of the I don't know, all ordinaries, ASX 20, 50, 100, 200, 300. Go down and have a look at the system watch lists here. Let's go back and analyzer again. So they're just side by side, the ASX 20, 50, 100, 200, they are too, 300 is different. It's not over the other side and the all ordinaries. The, um, the scans that's interesting. <laughs> They're different. So the 300 is not on the system watch list but is available in the analyzer. Um, the international markets aren't in here so you can't scan international markets at this stage and same with indices you can't scan those at this time. The, there will be a functionality added to scan the entire market um, will also be added in here. But the, only, the key difference is the ASX 300 is different which I hadn't noticed. So thanks for that, Wayne. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but it's something that's there. The other one that you've got is you've got, of course, all the ones that you've personally saved in here as well, all your personal watch lists, which you can um, select as well. Um, Graham, scrolls in that order, not alphabetic. Ah, I see. Um, scrolls through in the order that they're added to the list. So if we then select the watch list, so we'll just save that watch list that we've got there. There's, so there's tests four. And then if I select that watch list, test four, so BHP, HTM, NCM, ORG. What I suggest there is happening is before you save the watch list, Graham, is to actually sort it the way you want it. So if you want it alphabetically, sort it alphabetically and then save the watch list. Just click save if you've already saved it. You don't need to save it as something different. Click save and save it in that order and then it certainly appears to be working to pick that up and we go through in alphabetical order. So from PHP, HTM, NCM, ORG. So sort the list and then save the list once you've sorted it in the correct order that you're after. And that may help you, Graham, with the, the problem with them going in the wrong order as they have been for you.
So, okay, excellent. So, any other questions around anything that you've found or noted? And as I said, the the um, the customer support team have obviously been fielding a number of calls about the changes, and we are improving things and upgrading things as problems are identified, and we're adding in other features as we go. And the things like the the recent change that we did on getting those FX charts fixed, we weren't aware there was a problem and it was linked to anything that was showing a zero volume. Now intraday FX charts show a zero volume. It was something we didn't pick up in initial testing and it's now been actually solved. So as we come across things that, that are issues or problems, um, let us know and we can work through those and help to obviously improve the program. And there will be a, con a continued development program of added features, other things that you want in the program that will be added in as time goes by as well. So it's something that the, the technical team are constantly working on and improving things step by step. On the blog you can see what they've been doing. If you go to blog.traderdealer, oops, blog.traderdealer.com.au Go into Market Analyzer 7 and there's basic information including these videos that I've been talking about that are here and we scroll down and there is the find out what's changed in the latest release. The release notes here give you a list of all the changes and we're up to release number 64 and you can scroll back and see the updates that have been made over time. The latest one we talked about was the FX bug that's been fixed in the actual charts there. So you can have a look at back at previous problems and how they've been rectified using Market Analyzer 7. As well, that's under the release notes. There's also installation instructions and the webinars, the historical ones that we've conducted on different topics. So you can go back to those as well. So any other questions? All pretty quiet today. That's good. You must be getting more comfortable with the program, so that's a bonus. Finding your way around it. Um, Jason, I'll, I'll have a look at that problem that you're having. I'll, I'll try running a scan just offline and come back to you on um, what's happening with that. So I'll have a look at that after the webinar. Okay, no more questions, I'll just wrap it up there. Um, thanks very much for coming along today. As I said, what we looked at was a scanning functionality, how to take it a step further. And basically, the new scanner allows you to scan intraday. It's something you couldn't do before, and that's a great tool. So the DTMX trading tools, the analyzer, scans on the current data as of now. If you want to scan on yesterday's close, you can do that and you're using the trading system to scan on historical data. Um, and then the other one is you can also use the trading system to scan on weekly data as well. So you can use that to scan weekly data and pick up when a move is made on a weekly basis. So you don't have to scan every day, you can do it once a week to do that. Um, just a question from Martin, data link in the future, it's certainly on the list of things to be done as the data link and at the moment the broadcast functionality broadcasts through everything whereas the data link gave you the ability to broadcast to only certain charts or update certain things. So that is on the list of development to be done. Um, I don't have a time frame on it at the moment Martin but it's definitely in there. There's been a lot of requests for that. So thank you all for coming along to the presentation, much appreciate you being here and we'll catch up with you next presentation is Thursday evening and we'll be taking a look at the trading system in more depth and how to use that and the various tools that are available in there. So thanks very much for a great afternoon and I wish you all successful trading. <laughs>